My friends, after much necessary ado, it is time to get into the IP version 6 routing table. We're going to see some old friends, we'll see some connected routes, maybe our new route type or two, and primarily in this section, we're going to be working with static routing with IP version 6, default routes, and several different kinds of static routes, several different options that we need to be very fluent with on exam day. The dynamic routing protocols for version 6, we are saving those for the ICND2 section of the course where we will work with OSPF, B, uh, excuse me, OSPF, EIGRP, and RIP. Believe me, there's plenty of lab work here. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at our network for the following labs. And please note that Router2's address has changed slightly, and it's sharing the 2001 all twos, all threes, one subnet with Router 3's fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface. And routers 3 and 4 are sharing a subnet. They're sharing the 2001 all 3's, all 4's one subnet. And you can see that I gave each router a host number, 2, 3, or 4, and just left it at that. So let's take a look at router 2 to begin with and see what we see. Now I have enabled version 6 unicast routing on all three routers, IPv6 unicast routing, right? With a, with a dash between unicast and routing. So we've got all that. I have no tricks built in or anything like this. So let's just see what's on the routers before we even start configuring any kind of routes. The only thing I've done, again, is put those IPv6 addresses on, open the interface, and everything's good. So let's take a look at our routing table, and we don't see anything. I should at least see a connected route, right? I mean, this is version 6, so uh, maybe I'll see more routes, but I definitely shouldn't be seeing less. So what's going on here? The reason I'm not seeing my version 6 routes is that I ran my version 4 command, show IP route. You got to run show IPv6 route. Everybody does it. You'll do it on the job. <laughs> Don't do it on the exam. It'll cost you points. Just got to watch out for that. If you're talking version 6, make sure you got your v6 command. Now, you might be surprised to see three different entries here because the only thing that we've done so far on router 2 is configured an IP address. I did that off camera, opened it, and that was it. So why do I have three entries, and what's the deal with this L entry? Well, let's go from top to bottom here and take a look. Now, the show IPv6 route, that first line at the end is going to tell you how many entries you have, period. And obviously, you can count them yourself here, but that comes in handy once in a while. Now, as far as the codes go, the only codes we're looking at right now are C, L, and S, the very first three, connected, local, and static. We'll look at a few others in another part of the course, and a few of them, it's going to be quite a while before we get to them, but I just wanted to let you know we're looking at CLNS right now. Now, speaking of CLNS, with the letter C, that's our connected route, and we see pretty much what we'd expect to see. We see the subnet number there, and there's the mask via fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 directly connected, and it's all good. But these two L's, these local routes, now this behavior was built into version 6, but for those of you new to networking, I want to tell you they were not built into IP version 4. And the first time I saw it, I was like, what's the L? <laughs> so, you know, hey, again, it happens to everybody. I saw it very early when they first came out with it. I was like, what is that? Well, basically, it's a, it's a host route. It's a route that points to only one host. And we can identify those in uh, version 6 by that slash 128. As soon as you see that, you're dealing with some kind of host route, a route that only points to one host. Well, what is the host that it's pointing to here? The local router, yeah. So again, this helps the routing process along a little bit. We're not gonna get into a lot of details on why, but we are just going to say we know what a local route is. And when you put IP version six, and IPv6 address command on an interface and you open it, you're really creating two entries. You should see a connected for the subnet that that interface is on and then a local entry which is actually a host route and it's pointing at the IP version 6 address that you configured on that interface. So that's all there is to that one. Now this bottom one, this one is for multicasting purposes. That's our multicasting prefix, FF00 double colon slash 8. And we'll go into a little more detail with that in the second part of our IPv6 studies. Right now, I just want you to know what a local route is and that that is for multicasting purposes, FF00 double colon 8. 
So let's see. We see pretty much what we expect to see there on router two. Let's go over to router three and have a look around. And let's see. Show IPv6. Show IPv6 interface. I want to show you a little something different I did here. You probably noticed, I'm sure you did, that when we were looking at global unicast addresses earlier, you know, you're seeing this S in here, like, you know, I can have more than one. You know, here it is with join group address says, you know, more than one. Well, sure, you can join more than one group, but you may be surprised to learn that a single physical interface can have multiple global unicast addresses. They can be on multiple subnets. Now, one of the addresses here we're not using, the, the top one actually, uh, with the 2001 all ones, all twos block, and then a one after that for the subnet ID. We are not using that one in the lab. I strictly did this to show you that you can have more than one unicast uh, address on a given interface. So if we have two of these on fast ethernet zero, zero, let's see if I was up to any shenanigans over on fast ethernet zero, one. Nope, everything looks pretty normal here. We see the unicast address here, but that's why you see that ES, and I wanted to show you that. You can have more than one on a given interface. And I noticed this says 63. Hmm, we should probably fix that before we go any further. So we'll do a fix on that and make that a 64. That's why you run your show commands. And let's go ahead and run our local routes here. Show IPv6 route to begin with. Yep, we definitely want to fix that. That's a slash 63, and we'll just fix it to a slash 64. And you can see that we see four local routes, one for each global unicast address that we configured on an open interface, and then the one for multicasting there at the end. Now, you can already see this gets a little clunky to read, right? Because you got all this stuff squeezed together and your version six addresses are longer anyway and they're not all the same length, so they can be a little difficult to read. That's why I strongly suggest you get used to using your filters here with show IPv6 route. And just a little latency there, but if you wanted to look strictly at the local routes, just put local on the end. Now you're still gonna get your table and there's just one thing I wanna show you here before we move on, and that's the number of entries it refers to. Because it's really easy to run show IPv6 route local or connected or static or whatever filter you put on the end. And maybe you've got say four routes. And then you look up here and say, wait a minute, seven entries? You know, what do you mean seven entries? I don't have seven entries. You, know, you have seven entries in the IPv6 routing table as a whole. That's what it's referring to there. So don't let that freak you out because, of course, this table had 500 entries in it and you had four local routes, you'd be looking at, hmm, 500 entries and I only see four. Well, again, the seven entries here, the number of entries it's referring to is the full number of routes in the full table, not the ones that you chose to display. So I am going to fix that one entry there with that slash 63, make it a slash 64. And when we come back, we're gonna start doing some pinging. Matter of fact, let's do a little preview of that because we should be able to send some pings around right now without any static routing, without a routing protocol. Two should be able to ping three. Three should be able to ping two. And we're going to find out whether they can and then try to take it a little bit further and look at how we ping in IP version six coming up next.